I won't be able to because now recording has started. Yeah. Yeah, because I have to prepare for South Africa. There's a lot in the ground that I need to prepare. And there's a short space of time in between the two events. Sure. Yeah. That's wisdom. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, Apostle. we are okay now. Yes, we are okay. okay. We can start. Yeah, okay. He, uh, uh, Alessandro Apostle, was asking, How do we know one another? <laughs> and I, I said, <laughs> You are the one this time. You are the <laughs> one this time. You are no, the one this time. <laughs> you, you, you explain it better. It's been a while. It's been, a, I don't know, since when. And doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, prophet, what uh, a school of prophets, and uh, yes, yeah, eh, it's been a while. Yeah? <laughs> you you explain it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah. we started working together. It was two thousand and seven when uh, I wanted to to start the school of, school of prophets in South Africa, uh -huh. and uh, uh, he came alongside. And God has graced him so much in the area of media. He's got an amazing team. At that time, he was a, a, in partnership with one of another common radio station, popular with a, a, a multitude of listenership, where he was partnering with them at that time. As the time moves further, uh, I, was released, I was released full time to stand on my own and run prophetic trainings around the churches in South Africa and abroad. Wow. And he has been always there. And even in Zambia, he came alongside with me. He was broadcasting live the Zambia Africa Unite Summit in South oh, Africa. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Yes. yes. So he familiar so with we have, Summit Vision. Yeah, so we have walked a long way. And now, uh, uh, he, yeah, he such a humble man with a big vision you know he has planted about 15 churches in south africa and abroad and he has got this tv radio station tv program and radio station it's called car radio station c a r r radio station okay. and uh, we felt this time let us extend our borders into the networks that one has developed Yes. Uh, since I've mm -hmm. engaged with a um, reverend and uh, with the Africa Unite Summit. So I'm meeting a lot of people mm -hmm. with great potential that mm -hmm. I think South Africa, you know, will be greatly honored to hear, you know, the message of Christ um, from other nations. So we are broadening our horizons beyond South Africa, beyond Africa. He mm -hmm. wants to go in, into America, Europe, all over, because mm -hmm. the Great Commission is still standing. Yes. It says, go ye there yes. into the whole world, That's you right. know. That's and right. it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them everything. And mm -hmm. he says, uh, my presence will go with you. So we've got a Great Commission, all of us. And uh, yesterday I was sharing with California, I was saying, Pandemic looks bad because we have lost. We have lost uh, physically, we have lost spiritually, even mentally we have lost, you know, mm. but everything works together for the good because one common highlight for me about the pandemic, it has stretched the gospel beyond the, our self-centeredness. Oh yes, definitely, yeah, indeed. Like now we are with America but you are in South Africa, you are in America, but you are with South Africa. It would have not happened if it wasn't the pressure <laughs> of the pandemic, as bad as this might look. But for me, God has used this instrument to stretch our 10 pegs beyond our self-centeredness, my church, my nation, my people, into all people, <clears throat> into all humankind. So right. the Zoom has been the platform uh, which is a good result of spreading our gospel. Yes. So, yeah, we have locked, walked a long way with uh, Dr. Suwane. He was honored in South Africa because of the work that he is doing in South Africa and abroad South Africa. And he was honored with a, 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 a doctorate. 
So he's our doctor, our mentor, a, a man of integrity, a man who's, who is there, you know, and who loves, who loves the message of Christ Thanks, and man. him crucified. So he makes him known in, in various ways. So this time we are saying we are reaching out to America. We want to hear mm -hmm. what is the message for South Africa? Yes. Yeah. And what is the message for the world right now? So mm -hmm. that, 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 that is all we, we want to hear. We don't want to box ourselves in South Africa. We no. want to go abroad. And uh, mm -hmm. Apostle Swan has got that grace as well to an mm. extent that we'll plant churches in America soon. Yeah. We need this kind of passion back here in America. I'm telling you, a yeah. lot of churches have lost a lot of people. There's a uh, passivity, you know, a lot of passive members. A lot of people are still kind of watching and sitting back and they don't know what's going on. And they're waiting for the pandemic to be over. But the pandemic is just gonna continue, uh, you know, fighting its way through many other places. And we can't wait for the pandemic to be over. We have to stand up and mm -hmm. we gotta shake the pandemic off our spirit mm -hmm. so that we can fulfill the commission that God's given us, you know? Wow. Yeah. So that's that's the word that I've been receiving. And I feel like Africa is at the epicenter right now of a great catalyst move of God. Um, mm. like yeah. never before. So I'm excited to meet you, Dr. Swan. Um, wow. I received my doctorate too um just a, a few months ago. So wow. it's wonderful Thank to meet you. you and wonderful to connect with you. No, thank you very much. I'm honored to meet you and to connect with you. Thank you very much. I heard you were speaking that you have been traveling to Nigeria, some parts of, uh, I mean, of Africa. You are traveling a lot these days, eh? or it just as an evangelist, you are all over and you are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And nice to meet a, a man of God of your caliber. It is my, my honor. I'm honored for real. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Prophet Moy. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, yes, Prophet Moy. Um, I think this time we want to hear, we want to 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 hear what God has for us, South mm -hmm. Africans. We want to hear what God is saying. What is the message? You know, I remember in 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 the Word of God, especially in the Old Testament. I like the way. You know, the kings. I'll make an example of Jehoshaphat in Second Corinth Chronicles chapter 20. Okay. Where he was perplexed, not knowing what to do. And he's saying, is there a man with the spirit of God to give us the weight of the Lord? Mm -hmm. I like the way they were doing. They knew that there is, there is some way the spirit of God that is within a man and a woman of God. And this time as South Africa, we are inviting America. Uh, we are inviting people from all over the world mm -hmm. to tell us what God is doing. We believe that there is one spirit, there is one message, there is one voice. Mm -hmm. And we have invited you, uh, uh, Dr. Alexandro, to speak the word of the Lord to South Africa. Yes. There are so yes. many listenership of this uh, television program and radio station uh, that is tuning in to hear what is the message? What are you saying? What God is saying? Christ God. Mm -hmm. So we yes. are leaving up to you to unpack. Okay. You, I, we believe you have a message. Amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> so Over to you asking me some questions and then are we doing kind of an interview and then the word is that how we're going to manage it okay normally we we we, we open the platform we want to give it to you first share mm -hmm. what god has laid in your heart for us in south africa for yes. the continent of africa what god is saying and then oh. from there you know the the the, the, the holy spirit will lead us Oh, man. I know yeah. that Dr. Suwane will then maybe uh, ask or we, we, 
I, I, I feel like we are in a platform where the Holy Spirit is allowed to flow. Yeah. Yeah, so yes, that's right. the platform yeah. is open for you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Alexandro. Just, just flow. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are listening. We are listening. Sounds good. All right, you guys give me the green light and we, we go. Yes, yes, off we go. You are right to go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I believe the Lord is moving in this hour. We're living in a critical time and uh, in the midst of this pandemic, God is moving. This is, a, this is the 11th hour, the one minute before midnight and, and God is moving. And I am so blessed to be here with Apostle Moe and Dr. Swine. And I'm telling you, God's really moving in Africa. God's really moving in South Africa. There is a fresh move of God. And what I've been preaching lately, I've been, I've been talking about uh, the restoration of the wolves. You know, uh, if you go to the book of Nehemiah, um, I'm going to go to Nehemiah chapter two and um, verse three, uh, Nehemiah goes before the king and uh, you know, he's asking, well, the king is asking Nehemiah, why is your face sad, verse 2? And the king said to me, why is your face sad, seeing you're not sick? This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. Verse 3, I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins? and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Verse four, then the king said to me, what are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, how long will you be gone? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. It is time for the church to, to move from a, a season of uh, just uh, praying and intercession to a season of activating and doing. Because I, I think that's what Nehemiah, when he was praying, you know, the Bible says, that, so he prayed to the God of heaven. But he didn't just pray, he acted on that prayer. He walked on the word. He didn't, he didn't just receive an instruction and left it. He actually obeyed the Lord and he activated the word. And I think all of us are going through uh, an, an, an after pandemic season where we are experiencing, you know, um, a season of, of grieving, a season of losses. Many of us, you know, a, a lot of people that are listening right now, many of you have lost family members. Many of you have lost uh, maybe your business finances. May, maybe uh, you have lost uh, people in your church. And I'm talking to the pastors and leaders that are probably listening to this broadcast. Maybe you have lost a lot of things and you're going through a season of grieving and praying and you're, you're hearing of the chaos that's going on in the city of your parents. So you are hearing what's going on in South Africa. This word is very much a localized word because it's dealing with Nehemiah as a prophet and he's hearing the news from Judea and what's happening there, actually from Judah, sorry. He's, hear, he's hearing what's going on there, you know, in the city of his parents and, and he wants to go. He really wants to go and he wants to rebuild. He wants to rebuild the walls of Judah. He wants to rebuild. He wants to go back and restore the city. He knows that uh, the enemies came in, destroyed everything, and, and they left uh, a pile of rubble and wreckage. So he wants to go and restore it. And he's, uh, you know, if you look at the context of the scripture, he's hundreds of miles away. He's in another city. He is serving, right? He's serving to, to a king. He is... Uh, you know, uh, in, in another in another land, he's in a foreign land, but he hears the news, and instead of being oppressed, upset, and disappointed, he then begins to respond. And I feel like this is a time for the church to respond. And I, I feel like 
And this is a season for the church in South Africa to respond. And we know what's going on around the world. We know what the pandemic has done. We know how many churches have been shut down. We know the limitations that we have. We know that the lockdowns and the, and the curfew restrictions and everything that's going on in this world. But it's time for the church to shake off that pandemic mindset and move on and transition from a season of uh, just praying to a season of activating the word. We can pray the next two years while we are in this pandemic, but if we don't activate the word, if we don't shake off the pandemic, if we don't shake off the fear and the anxiety, that anxiety is going to eat us alive. And you know, I heard someone this morning said, but if you don't confront the enemy, and if you don't confront that area of fear in your life, the enemy is going to have your lunch. And that's an American saying, meaning, you know, the enemy is going to attack you. He's going to tackle you. He's going to go after you. So we need to move from it just to a season of praying. We're all praying. We're all concerned. We know what's going on in the city of our parents. So we know what's going on in South Africa. You, you, you're probably reading this word and this is applicable to you because you, you're like, you, you feel like Nehemiah. Maybe you feel disappointment. May, maybe you feel uh, distraught. Maybe you feel uh, depressed. Maybe you feel like Elijah. Lord God, am I the only one left in this whole nation that is feeling this way? Let me tell you something. When Elijah went into the cave and he was dealing with that syndrome of, uh, you know, depression and discouragement, and he felt like he was the only one. He had been forsaken and he felt like he was completely alone. God reminded him and said, hey, Elijah, you're not the only one. There is 7,000 people out there that have not bowed down to Baal. And I'm, I'm going to raise up a new generation. And I believe there's a new generation of South African evangelists and South African apostles and leaders and believers that are going to rise. They're going to merge. They're going to come out of this pandemic and they're going to have a new word, a new revelation, a new, a new rhema, a new vision, a new uh, perspective, a new strength, a greater authority. I, I, I'm telling you, Dr. Swan, I'm feeling the anointing as I'm speaking these words because I'm believing God is going to raise a new generation of Nehemiahs that will not only pray, but would actually take a step of faith and activate the word by obeying. See, when the word is released, we need to obey. We need to do something. We can't just, you know, catch the word in the air and let it let it just fly by. We need to release. We need to uh, capture the word, treasure the word, sow the word into our hearts. You know, we need to water that word. We need to nourish that word. We need to let that word germinate in our hearts so that the grow, uh, you know, so the growth can happen. So that the word of God can then begin to manifest and, and, and then it will begin to, you know, procreate miracles, signs and wonders. So I'm believing God is moving the church in South Africa from a season of waiting, praying, grieving to a season of uh, let's do something. Let's shake off this pandemic. Let's wake up. Let's discern the times. We need to understand. We need to read the times carefully, and we need to use the discernment that God has given us so that we don't get caught up in this pandemic and we don't get stuck because, you know, the enemy wants to really debilitate the church. The enemy wants to get everybody stuck in this mindset of, oh, it's going to be another, there's going to be another wave. There's going to be another lockdown. There's going to be another, you know, another season and, and more restrictions. we got to wake up. we got to realize that this is our hour. This is our time. And God is getting ready to do something amazing in Africa. And I'm so happy and so blessed to be part of what God is doing in Africa. We just got back from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, where we saw hundreds of leaders from nine different nations of Africa come together and they celebrated the name of Jesus. And for two days, we, we had an incredible summit. Now, Apostle Moe can tell you that God moved. I mean, we had an incredible time where the presence of the Lord touched hundreds of leaders. And so this is the challenge that we have now. Are we going to sleep in during this pandemic or are we going to wake up and realize this is our hour? This is our season. This is harvest time. And this is a time for us to go back out and explore. You know, we, we got to do what, what uh, Nehemiah did. 
We got to do what Nehemiah did. We got to be a uh, people of action. We got to respond. So, so instead of coming up with our own strategy, you know what Nehemiah did? He went into the secret place. He prayed. He saw the Lord. You know, he went before the Lord and he said, God, you know, I'm, I'm feeling up, uh, upset. I'm feeling disappointed. I'm a human being. I can be a prophet, but I'm also a human being. And I'm feeling the disappointment and, and the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I don't know what I'm going to do because the city of my parents lies in ruins. You know, the, the gates have been destroyed. The walls have been destroyed. There's wreckage and there's rubble everywhere. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then God gives him a strategy. See, this is how God operates. God will give you a, a strategy. He will give you an answer. He will give you a word when there is nothing but wreckage around you. And he will give you a word when there is nothing but dead bones around you. And he will say to you, just like he said to Ezekiel, prophesy over those dead bones. Prophesy, son of man. You have the word. You have the word in your mouth. So let that word come out of you. Prophesy. And then you will see the miracle. And so Nehemiah acted in obedience. And he went before the king. And he told the king, you know, this is what I'm going to request of you. I want you to give me some letters. See, God's going to give you favor. South Africa, God is going to give you favor. This is the word of the Lord for you, beautiful, precious church in South Africa. Dear saints, God is going to give you favor. And this is the hour and the time where this battle, you, can, you can't win this battle protesting and rebelling and going out there, you know, and making your sound heard in, in a civil way. I mean, I, I understand that all of us will get frustrated and we want to go out there and make a, you know, go on strike and protest and tell the government, hey, we have rights. I understand all of that. But this battle must be fought in the spirit. This battle must be fought in prayer and fasting. And then God will give you favor with the government. And then God will give you favor before the authorities. And then the letters will be released. And those letters will be for the church in South Africa to rebuild again. Let's go and rebuild. Let's go and rebuild the, the gates and the, and the walls that have been destroyed by the enemy. Let's go and rebuild our nation. Let's go and rebuild Africa. Let's go and rebuild what God is telling us and showing us to rebuild now. This is the hour. This is the season. And this is the time. And I love what Nehemiah did. When he got there, he didn't just, you know, obviously he had favor before the king. He got the letters. He went through the border. You know, he got some resources. God, see, when God provides, he's not only going to give you favor to get the letters, to get access, but he's going to bring the goods. He's going to bring provision. Because God is our provider. And you know, Dr. Swan, better, you know, and, and, and Apostle Moen, you know how much God loves to provide. You know how much God loves to bless his people. You know how much God loves to, you know, bless your socks off. He loves that. That's, he, that's his nature. That is our heavenly father. He loves to bless his people. And I believe there is a season where the body of Christ is going to be empowered. It's going to be blessed. All these restrictions, although we feel like we are restricted and limited, God's going to give you the letters. God's going to give you favor. And he's going to send you back, hallelujah, to that point, that place where you need to rebuild. And you know what Nehemiah did? One morning, early in the morning, probably around three o'clock in the morning, like, you know, in the wee hours, he got up. And the, the Bible says that he jumped on his horse. And he went around the city and he was scouting the land and he saw the wreckage. He saw the, the debris. He saw the, 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 you know, the damage. He saw, he explored the area, but God gave him compassion. God gave him strength and God gave him a plan and he executed that plan. He executed that plan. He didn't just look and, and, and you know, he didn't just uh, survey the damage. He didn't just assess the situation and left it. He actually did something about it. God wants his people to be proactive people, to be men and women who will ignite the next revival in South Africa, men and women who will wake up and shake off this pandemic and begin to preach the gospel, men and women who will not be afraid of contracting COVID, men and women who will not be afraid of contracting any disease. Why? Because the blood of Jesus is more than powerful. 
The blood of Jesus is more than enough. The blood of Jesus is more than sufficient. Let me tell you something. I'm a living miracle. I was healed of, of a deadly tumor between my lungs and my heart. I was only given one year to live, and yet God came through. He healed me when I was just a young child. And I've been preaching since the age of 11, and I've been uh, in 50 plus nations around the world. And I love what God is doing right now in Africa, because Africa is at the epicenter of a great move of God. And just like um, our dear, you know, uh, spiritual father who is now in, in heaven, you know, he, he's a great hero. He was a great hero. He's still, you know, he obviously he, he's living on the other side of eternity. But uh, Pastor Bonke once said, from Cape Town to Cairo, the gospel shall be preached and Africa shall be saved. This is the hour. Wow, wow, wow. This is the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's wake up. Let's do what Nehemiah did. Let's mm -hmm. go out. Let's wow. win the lost. Let's make disciples. God is about to move in a mighty way. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, that's powerful, Dr. Alexandro. Really is. I'm taking the highlights of what you have said to activate the word, to pray and activate the word and also to act on it, not just to be the hearers, but we need to act uh, on the word like uh, Nehemiah did. And also the, one of the things that you have highlighted, you said this is a season that we need to do something as Africa. I know as Africa, we are looking up to America and we say the Africa, uh, it's like uh, America is the role model of the world and Africa. So we are looking up to you. So when you speak and say Africa should arise, we need to act on the word we need because God is going to give us the season for this moment. I would like you to, to tell us more, uh, Dr. Alexandro, and uh, in this time to take an opportunity and not cry and say, Lord, we are doomed because of the pandemic, but to write upon the wave of favor that God has given us, what we as Africa needs to do, because there are so many people who will be watching and listening to this message and tell us what do we need to do? We, we don't need to look down upon ourselves and say we are doomed because the walls and the gates are bent, but we need to do something. And I need the, I see that there is a point there. I need you to emphasize that point and that we need to rise and to act on the word because the favor is upon our life. I'm so blessed. I'm so, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but something is shaking my spirit. I'm, I feel like I can jump right now because <laughs> of what you are sharing with us. <laughs> I feel like this is the, the, the word for the hour. Yes, and I yes. believe what God is doing right now, he is awakening the, the church, the kingdom church, the remnant. Yes, yes. He's awakening those that are waiting for the bridegroom, those that are you know, those that, 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 that are standing, that are faithful, that are loyal, those that are, mm -hmm. those that are true disciples. See, uh, we had a, a, a pandemic before this uh, COVID pandemic hit our world. We had, we had another pandemic in the church, and that mm. pandemic was called passivity. It was Ooh. called lukewarmness. It was mm. called, you know, it, it was called seeker friendliness. It was mm. called, oh, I'm just going to church and I'm just going to sit and just warm up the pew. I'm not going to get too involved. I'm not going to engage. Uh, you know, uh, th that pandemic swept the church. That pandemic actually, you know, went through the whole world. It, it was a pandemic of, uh, uh, it was like the spiritual coldness in the church. So what God is doing through COVID, he's actually rekindling the fire. He mm. is sparking the flame. He mm. is reviving the soldiers. Mm. He is reviving those Elijahs that have been silent for too long. He is reviving those that have been in the cave. He is reviving those that are standing on the other side of the Jordan waiting for something to happen. He is reviving those Elijahs, hallelujah, those Elijahs who have just received the mantle and yet they don't know what to do with that mantle and God says strike the strike the water the same way you saw your forefathers striking the water the same way you are going to strike the water I, I feel the anointing when I'm saying that oh see, I'm because, feeling it oh too. hallelujah because <laughs> Elijah see Elijah had to act on the word he mm, had to hallelujah the word mm. he saw the word modeled 
He saw the word manifested. He saw the miracles that Elijah did. He saw people being raised from the dead. He saw incredible signs and wonders. And so, you know, he was he was being schooled. He was being mentored by, you know, Elijah. And Elijah was hungry. He was passionate. He fought the battle. He, he ran the race. And then he got to the end, to the other side of the Jordan. And, the, you know, and Elijah asked Elijah, you know, what do you want from me? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. You know, I want a double portion of your spirit. And a lot of people, a lot of people just take that out of context. And they think that that's actually, that that's talking about Elijah's spirit. But that was actually talking about the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the word, the manifested glory. That was talking about the manifested glory that was dwelling in Elijah. And so when he said, give me a double portion. He was saying, Amen. give me a double portion of that spirit, of that anointing, you know? And so when Elisha is waiting, obviously, uh, you know, he's waiting for something to happen, but Elijah warned him and said, if you fix your eyes, and if you, you know, look up, and you don't take your eyes off me, you know, if you, if you stay here, basically, if you're faithful, you're loyal, if you can keep your eyes <laughs> on the prize, then it will be given to you. Otherwise, forget it, man, it won't happen. So, you know, I'm kind of putting it into context for you. So, you know, so can you imagine the splendor, the glory, the lightning, you know, the fiery horses, the whirlwind separating the two of them? Can you imagine all of that heavenly activity? And Elisha had to keep his eyes open. Open. Even though he was like holding them to the grass and, you know, probably trying to hold on to anything because of the wind and the power and the, 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 the glory, you know, it was it was such a glorious experience and he was probably knocked out and he was, you know, trying to 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 um, contemplate and, and behold the glory. And then Elijah was taken away. And when Elijah is taken away. Elijah at that moment could have thought, well, that's it. My mental is gone. That's it. My portion is gone. That's it. Where is it? It's gone. But he didn't. He kept looking up because the anointing that was promised, the anointing that was given, that was uh, promised and prophesied, it was not just, it wasn't transferred by man. It wasn't handed over to Elisha by Elijah. It was handed over to Elisha from God. And God had to take that mantle from Elijah and drop it on Elisha. And that's what God is doing in this hour. Don't depend on men. Don't depend on systems. Don't depend on, 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 on you know, the old wine skin. Don't depend on, on what you're relying. Don't depend on, even on the church culture and the church system. Depend on me. Come and seek my face. Come and dwell in my presence because there is going to be a transfer of heavenly authority, heavenly anointing, heavenly manifestation from God himself to the church because God is bestowing the church with greater power and greater authority to overcome this pandemic. I mean, if you think this pandemic is bad, we're living in the end times and many other ones are coming. And so we need to wake up. We need to shake off this pandemic, the mindset of, oh, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. You know, that mindset of, I'm just going to wait to see how long this is going to last. That mindset of, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to watch. I'm tired of watching church online. Or I'm not going to preach. Or I'm not going to go and witness because I may, you know, I may give COVID to someone. We got to wake up and shake off that mindset because the devil so far has taken out many during this pandemic, it's time for the church to wake up and use their God-given authority and shake the kingdom of darkness. Wow, wow, wow. That's powerful. <laughs> we need to stand up and the God is taking it and he is the one who's going to release the authority. I mean, the, the, the anointing that from Elijah 
Elijah didn't pass it to Elisha, but God himself, he released it to Elijah. That means God is in business, is doing a new thing. Wow, it's a new era indeed. We are experience. I mean, we are going to experience a new wine. Uh, Apostle Mazo, please, uh, Moy, <laughs> come, come. You've been quiet for a long time. It's, wow, yay. it's hot in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel rescue. the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 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 Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, uh, the, uh, the Dr. Suwane, that last night, <laughs> we were exchanging <laughs> prophetic words mm -hmm. and uh, it's like america is bringing the same prophetic word we were giving exactly. uh, america yesterday we spoke of uh, the scriptures that says god uh, jesus christ grew in stature and <laughs> in favor with god and mm. with men and we said to America, it's time for God's favor to be granted to every man and woman of God who has been walking faithfully with the Lord, with men this time. And the Lord was saying last night that we do have favor with God. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that needs to be preached to us. We are walking in his favor, but it's a season and the time where now God is granting us favor with men. Mm -hmm. And you are bringing the word favor to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the second way we spoke prophetically for, doc, uh, for the car radio station and Suwane, we said uh, Suwane God himself will provide. It's mm -hmm. amazing that we are getting the same message <laughs> from different people from uh, uh, in America. So yeah. in a, it's, it's an exchange. So for me, uh, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at this detail. That is, this is an exchange. Africa, take your rightful position. What yeah. you have is what America have. Mm -hmm. What America has is what Africa has. It's mm -hmm. time for us to speak one language without any fear, without any inferiority complex this time. We mm -hmm. need to stand up. The Bible says, at the end times, all nations will sing one song. For mm. me, it's like this is a time and the era. We are on the earthworks. Mm. I said in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dr. Alexandra was there when I said, I almost sense that as it was with the times of Isaiah, where they were prophesying that there would be a, a crying voice in the wilderness, mm. preparing the way for the coming of Yeshua. I feel like we are in those times where mm. God is bringing unity in the body of Christ, where God is bringing back the church into its rightful place, where the church is laid on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. So God is saying it's time for the apostles and the prophets to leave honor and, and, and titles but it's the time for us to go on the ground and wear boots exactly as it's in the construction because mm -hmm. we need to go on the ground level and dig holes and prepare the, the road because the second coming of the Messiah is now. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the time and the hour. So I almost feel like we are preaching one and the same message. We are prophesying one and the same message. The message of you are bringing the message of authority is like God is reminding South Africa, the authority that we have. We are coming from a DNA of authority. Mm. I think there is a scripture in Psalms uh, 33, verse 6 and 9, where it speaks about it, it, God in the creation part, where it says, I think it's verse 9 in Psalms 33, where it says, he spoke, there it was. Mm -hmm. He commanded it stood firm. Mm. We are coming in that authority. And this is the authority that God has given us. I think it's Luke chapter 10, 19, where he says, I've given you the authority. You shall trample over the snakes and the, you shall trample. The authority, the authority that is me, I'm giving it unto you. So it's time for us to take our rightful position. I like when you said, uh, uh, Dr. Alexandro, we are not limited by the pandemic because we are serving an unlimited God. 
We mm. need to tap in into the unlimited arena and claim what belongs to us. The mission is still standing. The great commission is still standing to make disciples. It's still mm. standing. It's still standing that we need to preach gospel. We're not going to say, oh, Lord, there were, there were restrictions. And then we'll ask you, what about the phone that you have? What about mm. your WhatsApp? What about your Facebook? Facebook what yeah. about the, okay, you did not have internet, but you have the data for WhatsApp. You can preach the gospel through WhatsApp. You can preach the gospel through Facebook. He will ask us. So there will be no excuse of why we never spread the gospel. Mm. You know, because the favor for us to spread the gospel is now. What about the countries that has never had the opportunities we had? We are so privileged. I've had so many horrific stories of countries like the Muslim country where people are not even allowed to preach. But it means that the, the, the statistics are saying the greatest number of the growing church is, is right there. Mm. And what about us where we have all the privilege? So God is staring us up to say no more crying about pandemic, but it's time to pick up our mats and follow and follow Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> amen 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 that's powerful yeah <laughs> thank you yeah I, I like it and also you have highlighted uh dr alexandro where you said the church must stop being lukewarm and mm. uh, yeah i think in africa we must stop being i mean to be lukewarm <laughs> <laughs> to get as you're emphasizing uh, prophet Mo and uh, these these times we need to stand up we need to position ourselves and i'm just reminded that g uh, the, the, the there was a face of a lion in the leadership there is a face of a lion and a face mm. of an eagle so we mm. need to take all those anointing the anointing of a lion the anointing of an eagle and also mm. as work as jesus was with as a son of man who was working and moving around with there was no mm. restriction there was no blockage he he was able to move to Samaria, areas able to move into judea and I, I believe it's our time as we are receiving the message as we emphasize uh, uh prophet more mm. the, 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 the message from our american brothers they are said, telling us oh, no mm. this is it and we don't need to sit down and be afraid and be sorry about Yourself, we must take action. Wow, amen. Thank you. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. 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 You mentioned that word. Um, that's a very powerful word, and I have preached on that scripture the four angels with the four faces, and uh, two faces amen. that really caught my attention when I read that scripture you know, the face of the man and the mm -hmm. face of the ox. Okay. And uh, I was asking the Lord, what does the ox represent? You know, because we talk about the eagle. We talk about the lion. We know the yeah. lion is the lion of Judah. We know the <laughs> eagle, you know, represents the apostolic vision. You know, the church yeah. that's always uh, soaring above the storm. We are flying above the storm. You know, we know those things in the spirit. But then mm -hmm. nobody really talks about the ox. Nobody really knows what the ox represents. But mm -hmm. the ox mm -hmm. represents hard work. That's what it represents, hard work, determination. You know, the ox is, is such, a, such a fascinating animal because they, they, they actually work through any kind of uh, rugged terrain. They, you know, they go up uh, these rugged mountains in Israel and they have to, they use them as cargo animals mm. and they load them and they pack them and they have to carry these heavy cargoes up the mountains in Israel, and if, if you've been to Israel, you know, the mountains there are not little, you know, they're not just, uh, you know, hills or, you know, stumps, you know, they are big mountains, they are rugged mountains, you know, uh, and some of them are unchattered mountains, you know, and, and then people don't even go to some of these places, and so the ox was used back in the days as a cargo animal, and it represents the spirit of you know, uh, serving the Lord, servanthood, mm. serving the Lord with passion, with determination, mm. 
We are going to get through this. We're going to climb this mountain. We're going to work through this pandemic for the kingdom. We're going to keep mm -hmm. preaching. We're going to keep spreading the word. We're going to keep making a difference. We're going to keep, you know, we're going to keep doing what we're called to do. Amen. The greatest victory is for the church to fall asleep and have, you know, just, just be silent in this hour and have no passion, no appetite whatsoever. Amen. Wow, the enemy's greatest victory. The enemy will say then, game over. That's great. The, the church is not doing what they're called to do. But that's that's a lie. The enemy knows that even in this pandemic, God is awakening the church. And this is our mm -hmm. hour. This is our season. Ooh. This is the time where the church is going to rise up. This is the time where God is raising a new remnant, a new generation of men and women who will take the baton, who will take the mantle, who will take this anointing, and they will do great signs and wonders, even in the midst of a pandemic, because God... Mm -hmm miracle power does not stop even in a pandemic mm. amen yeah. amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Prophet> <laughs> um i know that uh, now uh, the, 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 it's amazing the hour is gone we are with an evangelist you could just sense and you could just taste <laughs> amen <laughs> so i want a, a, a dr alexandro uh, to speak prophetically now into the, into the audience, into uh, the community, into the society, into the nation of South Africa. Speak prophetically in these few minutes that are left for us in this hour. Uh, whatever the prophetic sense that you have, you know, and I've, I've seen you in Kenya flowing in the prophetic way you were calling for things and you were, you were making declarations. So now that, the, 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 the South Africa is listening. There might be a prophetic sense, you know, in the area uh, or oh, as the Lord leads in this few minutes that is left for us. Amen. Well, Father, over I to you. Praise. And I thank you for the, the church in South Africa. And I just, uh, I feel in the spirit that God is awakening many, many from the slumber, many from this facility, many from this time of grieving and, 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 and just looking back and thinking, I wish I could have done something different. You know, uh, this has been a time of regret for a lot of people, a time of uh, grieving, a time of uh, feeling upset and disappointed and looking down and looking powerless and feeling powerless. But I prophesy the Lord has given you power and authority, and this is your time and your season to rise up. God's giving you favor in South Africa. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. God is about to rewrite your history. God is about to give you a fresh new manna. God is about to give you a new season of 10 revivals. I feel it in my spirit. God is about to awaken the church in South Africa, and you're about to experience the revival. Bible, the ones you have burning in your streets is about to burn all over again. I feel like South Africa, many Christians in South, Af South Africa feel very disappointed. They feel very upset because they, they look back and they say, well, we have revival here. We had a great move of God. We had amazing generals come to our land. We had a many great ministers come out of our, uh, out of our shores. And now look at what's going on on in South Africa. Look at the political chaos and the economic chaos and, and even this pandemic and what this pandemic is doing. But the Lord says to South Africa today, I'm about to redeem. I'm about to restore. I'm about to renew. I'm about to give you back the glory days that once you had, and it's going to be a greater glory because I never do the same thing again. I do some things that are new and fresh. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, this is a new season and it's going to be fresh and it's going to be empowered. And I, I'm going to Fan the flame of revival in your land again. That's what I feel the Lord is saying. I'm going to fan the flame of revival in your land again. And I see it. The Lord has chosen South Africa as a pioneer nation, as a hot spot, as a nation that will host the presence of God and will release this message to the whole of Africa. South Africa, you're special to me, the Lord says. You're a chosen jewel. You're a chosen nation. And I have not forsaken 
forsaken you. I have not left you. I'm about to heal your land and I'm about to expose. And what I'm doing right now, I'm exposing a lot of things, the Lord says. I'm exposing the fake. I'm exposing the corruption. I'm exposing those things that were hidden inside. But now the Lord says, I'm bringing them out to the spotlight so that you can see what I've been doing behind the scenes, the Lord says. But I'm about to restore the glory days. I'm about to restore the shine and the glory. And I see this picture in the spirit of a diamond that's been through some rough times, you know, while it was polished. And I see like, you know, bits and pieces. I see it is being polished, but I see the Lord really shining this diamond and working on it. And, and, and I see that this represents and in the spirit, I see the map of South Africa and, and, and Ora Mashikitiramal. Thank you, Lord. And I see this brand new shine coming out of the diamond. And the Lord says, I'm, I'm about to give you the best days ahead. God is about to rewrite your history and he's about to open a new chapter. God is doing something new. Embrace it, see it, and believe it. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. That's so powerful. Thank you, man of God. Thank, Thank you. you so <laughs> much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. Wow, Thank you for yeah. having me. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alexandra. Thank you very much. And uh, that was lovely. We had a wonderful moment. It's like, uh, woo, we have known each other for a long time. And the flow <laughs> and the anointing, I can feel it oozing out of you. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so Prophet Moet. <laughs> I think uh, one more, uh, uh, Prophet Alexandra, if you have a word for Dr. Uh, Suwane in this one minute left and the, uh, the car radio station or the TV program, what prophetic sense you have and uh, to just minister because I believe you are a prophetic evangelist of this time. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah. I a prayer. Like the Lord is, is giving you a, a brand new vision. I feel like you're expanding, you're going through some uh, expansion. And, and during this expansion, there has been some uh, birth pain. You know, you're, you're going through, you know, you're about to give birth to a new vision, a greater vision. There's something that you haven't really told some of your board members and people around that there's a big project that is, it's been between you and the Lord. And I just feel like the Lord is about to give you favor and he's about to hand you a set of keys. And I see expansion. That's what I see in the spirit, expansion. And, and, and the Lord says, go and conquer the land that I've already given you. Go and conquer that land for I'm with you and I'm standing by your side. I really feel the Lord has given you favor for not just media, but many other aspects of ministry. You have a, 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 a marketplace anointing and the Lord is going to bring a lot of business people around you and they're going to be blessed by the teaching and the principles of the kingdom that you will impart over them. So I'm so blessed to meet you and I can't wait to see you uh, next time I'm in South Africa. Wow, ah, thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> God wow. bless you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much. much. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, I think uh, the, the Dr. Alejandro, we will give you the link once uh, the, the, everything has been edited. As, as I've said, this is a TV program and the radio program. So as you'll take it into social media everywhere. So everything has been recorded. Yeah. So okay. God bless you. Have a Thank lovely you. time till next time. Until next Thank time. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Bless very you. much. Uh, Prophet, thank you very much. Huh? Yes. <laughs> that was a lovely time. Wow. <laughs> this was a lovely time. What next? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is doing wonders through you. Thank you. You are a blessing for real in yes. my life and in my ministry. You are mm. just opening doors. May the Lord bless you richly beyond hey, thank nature, you. beyond thank any you. Thank you. human comprehension. <laughs> yes. So I will hear from you a uh, uh, a doctor, what next? And okay. uh, the list, I gave you the list. We are just in number two. So okay. <laughs> we need to <laughs> we need to record Ethiopia, maybe here another ascent or Pakistan. Pakistan. Okay. So Pakistan is in Kenya. Okay. So Kenya is for the same time as us. 
So okay. it's up to you whether you want to start with Kenya, Pakistan, yeah. or you want to, you, you, it's Pakistan and Ethiopia. So I'll hear from you. And they okay. can't they can be recorded during the day because it's the okay. same time as ours. I think okay. Ethiopia is one hour ahead of us. And then Kenya is one hour ahead of us. So we can record during the day. Okay. Okay. No, I'll confirm with you, right? Okay. All right. Okay. God Thank you. you. Thank you very much. God bless you. you. God bless Thank you. you. Yeah, thank you very much. That was Prophet Moy uh, speaking to us and with Dr. Alexandro Arian from America. We were blessed. I hope you were blessed. You see, you received the message from the servants of God, from the men of God. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. And you're going to be blessed. And the power of the Lord has heated you and you are encouraged, you are strengthened. You are being told, just be strong, take action like Nehemiah. God is telling us and expanding and expanding from what God is telling us. Did you recognize something? I'm telling you, God is good. God is wonderful and God is glorious. I know you're going to be blessed. I'm telling you, my friend, tell your friends and your loved ones to watch and tune in on our car TV and car radio, Swanem Song Ministries, and you're going to be blessed. Your life will never be the same again. Thank you very much. See you next time. Please tell your friends. We are continuing between eight and nine. It is our hour. It is our moment. It is our season. Africa, this is your season. This is your moment. May God bless you.